Well, hello everybody and welcome to Wales. And as you can see, it's sunny Wales as well. I mean, when we turned up yesterday, it was like this, it was glorious. Uh, it's, it's warm, it's sunny. Uh, it's sort of fairly late in the afternoon now. And it's been beautiful all day, blue sky day. The first day we've been here, amazing. But we're, we're here for a week and we've come to the, uh, to the coast and we're about 10 miles south of Aberystwyth. And literally I can see there's a little cove just out of shot there which is about a minute's walk down the down this road a uh, secluded cottage and you can probably hear uh picking up well i hope the microphone is picking this up uh, house sparrows uh in the background uh cheeping away uh, and they have been flying around this sort of back garden area ever since we got here there's loads of them here and there's other things like robin and starlings and in fact i've had um willow warbler and chiff chaff and those sorts of things in the garden as well here today so that's that's been fantastic but my my aim was to do a couple of films uh while we're here over the week uh, and when we came in uh, yesterday we drove in through this fabulous sort of wooded valley with a stream at the bottom which is literally you know uh, the, for the next mile up up the road here uh, and it was sort of mature oak sort of hanging woodland and I thought oh that that would be perfect for a film so hopefully I'll check that out later on in the week uh, plus you know walking down to uh, the beach yesterday you know there's tons of stuff in flower at the moment you've got thrift coming out sea campion there's even bluebells still flowering I got early purple orchid uh, today uh, there's red camping so all those sorts of things are out so we could you know perhaps we'll do a film on on sort of coastal flowers as well so uh, anyway we'll see what the week brings but actually when we got here yesterday I got an added bonus um, in the fact that I didn't realize quite how good the garden would be for garden bird photography now it's something that wasn't on my agenda at all this week but actually having seen it I just think it's perfect. Um, as you can see, the sun is behind me, which I know isn't making the filming, uh, you know, very easy. And you <laughs> but at least I'm not squinting into the sun too much. Uh, but the great thing about this is you can probably see, you know, this this um, cottage is located in a, on one side of a, of a of a valley, and you'll see the other side behind me here, uh, and that creates great opportunity for me to photograph the birds that come and basically perch in these uh, in these scrubby bushes behind me and they create you know brilliant natural perches so I don't even have to go up into the wood beyond and find some perches to get them to sit on if I want to photograph them I've got it already here and they've been coming and they've been lining up in these in these bushes all day so it's you know, it's, it's perfect it's a perfect opportunity and they're basically you know the, the tops of the bushes are at eye level with me so I <laughs> it, it couldn't be better um, now the other thing is that with that valley side being so far away the background is is miles away well not li literally miles away but it's a long way away which allows me to create this beautiful green out of focus background really really easily when the birds are perched in the top of those trees uh, and the tops of these bushes create well give me lots of opportunity to to get them amongst sort of fresh green leaves because it's late May now so the the leaves are fairly still fairly fresh on the trees or there are some um, some some older deader parts of the uh, you know these scrubby bushes as well so get them perched in there um, so it, the other thing about it being this time of the year there's plenty of daylight hours obviously and the sun is, uh, is, is, is again positioned perfectly because it's coming up behind the camera in the morning and it's moving around the sky over here uh, and it basically sets behind you know this this valley but this sort of uh, valley slope behind me so what that's doing is it's creating lots of opportunity for me to photograph the birds in different ways firstly with uh, the light coming from behind the camera so in the sort of traditional uh, bird photography sense i guess with that sort of bird on the stick approach so you've got the bird beautifully lit um, and obviously with the, as i was explaining in the background a long way uh, behind the bird I can get close to them because they're quite confiding and I can use the top of these um, these these bushes as brilliant perches uh, so I can create that nice isolated well lit you know bird with a beautiful green background and I'll show you some of the images that uh, that, that I've been producing this morning um, that was really quite nice just to relax you know the first day we've got here just relax and have fun photographing the birds in that way
If you remember from the video I did on uh, bluebells, I think in particular I was explaining about uh, depth of field uh, and, and getting uh, isolated subjects by getting the background nice and out of focus. And depth of field uh, is a result of um, the aperture of the lens, the focal length of the lens, uh, the distance you are from your subject and the distance the background is from the subject. So the further away the background is from your subject, the closer you are to your subject, the longer the focal length and the wider open your aperture is represented by smaller f-stop numbers then the shallower the depth of field will be. Now you'll have to experiment and play around um, with all of those elements you know just to really get to grips and understand them all but uh, th that's the basics of it. Now as well as that sort of traditional approach to photography what happened this morning was that as the sun moved round actually we, we had some high cloud come in so it was still very very bright but what that high cloud did is it diffused the sun so uh, I got this sort of even lighting and I had uh, sparrows coming in, the house sparrows, and they were coming and perching in uh, the branches, the dead branches of, of, of one of the trees that make up this sort of scrubby area. Uh, and I was photographing them almost from underneath. They were, they were higher than me. So I was photographing them into that sort of uh, high, uh, bright cloud. Uh, and that gave me the opportunity to create some high key images. Now, normally I wouldn't bother it would be sort of fairly gray and lifeless, but actually, because the, the actual perches weren't too busy and they were on isolated twigs uh, and the, the background was fairly uniform in colour, what I did was is I overexposed those images and actually I went to, I think it was 3.7 stops overexposure to basically make the uh, background go all white and properly expose the bird to create that sort of high key effect. Now, if I had metered normally, uh, and you know basically taking the camera's word for what the the metering was that image basically the bird would have been underexposed and it would have exposed for the sky which would have just gone gray uh, so i knew given that circumstance that i would have to uh, i would have to overexpose that shot at, at, well at least by two stops in the end as i said it was nearly four but i experimented a little bit until i got it right and actually i i you know well from looking at them on the back of the camera I think I've created some really different you know quite nice results so I'll put the best shot uh, from that uh, on for you now and just just see what you think but as I said that is a result of deliberately overexposing uh, by three to four stops um, so again if you get that sort of situation where you've got a bird uh, which has got a relatively clean perch uh, you've just got a um, high cloud or you know, uh, a, a, a sort of pale blue sky or something like that. You can easily burn that out to pure white, create a high key image by overexposing the image. So give that a go and see how you get on given, those sort of, uh, given that sort of set of circumstances when you come across them. But uh, as I said, I'll put the best of those images on for you now. Now the other situation which uh, I came across was the first thing that came into my mind actually because as we turned up yesterday it was about half past seven uh, in the evening and by that time the sun had come all the way round behind me and was basically setting uh, to my left uh, over the, it was just about to dip beyond the ridge line of that, uh, of that sort of valley side uh, behind me. And what it was doing was the valley side was in shade but here was still illuminated, but it was as the, because the sun was coming from behind me, it was illuminating the bird's wings, it was backlighting them. And as they were flying to and from these scrubby bushes, it was backlighting their spread wings. Now I know that the exposure difference between, you know, those, uh, you know, the sun coming through the bird's wings and this shaded uh, valley side would have been such that I can create some nice, uh, artistic images basically create a, a, a you know a black background and all you'll see is this sort of nice silhouette and backlit uh, light coming through the 
through the wings of the birds to create a nice artistic feel. Now, I didn't get the opportunity to take any of those yesterday evening, but I'm hoping that you know it's going to stay relatively clear and I'll get that opportunity again in a couple of hours time as the sun moves round and gets to that angle again and the birds come in and out because they've been flying around all day so I'm pretty confident that they'll they'll still be flying around come the evening in fact one's just flown across straight over the camera as, it, as I speak um, so I'm hoping you know I'll get the the opportunity to do that and I'm going to handhold and try and track them in flight uh, and I'm going to underexpose this time, probably by at least two stops again, maybe three or even four. I'll experiment and, and see how we get on. But you know, if I don't get the opportunity to do that this evening, then perhaps I'll get an opportunity later on in the week. Fingers crossed if the, if the weather holds. I mean, the forecast is, you know, is set to be sort of cloudy with sunny intervals for most of the week, so you never know. I might get the opportunity. And of course, being on the coast, it's a bit of a microclimate. Uh, in any case and it does its own thing so so let's see um, we you know we'll, we'll see if we're lucky so as you can probably see um, we're a few hours on now and you can see how that sun has dipped lower in the sky and has put the uh, opposite valley side in complete shade now what that does is it creates this vast contrast uh, in exposure level uh, between the light shining through uh, birds wings as they still fly across these um, you know the tops of these sh uh, shrubby bushes and things so you know if you think about the light coming through the wings because the the sun's still catching the top of these but it, the that valley sides now in shade you think of the exposure value between you know the difference in exposure value between you know that and the shade you can see how you can create some artistic images now what I've been doing is there have been some uh, herring gulls that have been flying up and down you know the valley in front of me and they've been passing in front of that shaded uh, valley side but they've still been in sunlight themselves so I've been able to underexpose by four stops and it's created this completely black background and all you can see are the, are the white bits of the gulls as the sun is catching them uh, and that's the effect that I wanted to create so you know by underexposing uh, by four stops you know, you just play around and, and, and sort of see what you can get. I started by uh, three stops because, you know, experience told me, you know, perhaps, you know, that's what I'd, uh, I'd need, but I was still blowing out the highlights of those goals. So I, I took it down to four stops and that seems to be the sweet spot with it, even what I can see from the histogram on the back of the camera. So yeah, four stops, but just play around with those things and, um, you know, and see how you get on. But what I'm really hoping to get um, is, you know, backlit wings of, the, of some of these sparrows you know, flying along these, uh, the tops of these bushes, you know, directly behind me. I've got probably an hour, hour and a half until that sun disappears, you know, behind the, uh, you know, behind that valley top or the, the side of that valley top. Uh, and then, you know, the, the sun won't be hitting the birds anymore. But anyway, it's that contrast that, you know, creates the, I guess, the opportunity to take something artistic. Uh, and photography is all about light, as you know. So uh, anyway, Fingers crossed I can get something. Uh, let's see how we get on. But I'll put up, um, you know, the best of those gull images for you now. And, well, you know, so we'll see how we get on. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you something with the sparrows as well. <laughs> 